Welcome back to Bantajard. Uh This um, shunt of this OA is um, from a viewer, Mike, and he sent me four shunters to weather for him, which is which is lovely, a uh, nice opportunity, and um, four nice shunters, a couple of 08s and a couple of 20s to uh, to weather. So this is just the first one I wanted to show you, and this um, this particular network rail livery. If we look at the pictures online, they're really not that heavily um, uh, weathered, so oh, I'm going to be uh, quite uh, restrained as much as I can anyway with my weathering. So um, this is a mixture of Valeria. I just want a really dark brown so that I just make this one up. This is, um, I think it's dark earth and um, and a bit of black just to give me this sort of dirty colour and I've mixed it down further with uh, thinners to make it really really thin um, but it dries a little bit too quick as you can see so anyway doesn't matter um, so that brush is very very lightly um, dampened it's really just to reactivate the um, the acrylic once it's on and then I can move it around a little bit and I can make some sort of tide marks around the edge of the panels so we're just going to um, just brush them back to look as if they've been sort of half-heartedly maybe cleaned or, or the rains come down and uh, sort of wash the panels a little bit and then I've got a um, this is a, this brush is dry I need to keep this dry and um, as clean as we can all the time and I'm just going to brush back even more and you'll see that the paint will stay in the sort of recesses around the handles and in between the panel lines and um, that kind of shows the panels up a bit more and it looks like the dirt has sort of settled in those recesses where they're not going to get cleaned away by uh, man or beast Once that snaps back into focus, hopefully you can see what we're doing. It's just a matter of playing around now with uh, with this. So we're going to do each sort of couple of panels at a time, rather than doing the whole side because it will dry too quickly, and we won't be able to manipulate it anymore. So I'm just literally doing one or two panels at a time. Lightly dampened. So move it around a little bit, and then with the flat brush, we can uh, we can streak it down a bit further, and it adds some some runs. And we're pushing the um, the paint sort of down because it will naturally come to a um, it will settle along the bottom of the panels. So it's going to be heavier down there. If you look on the reference pictures, if we look at this particular one online. You'll see the same. That's uh, kind of how it's going to look with the um, with the with the weathering and the, the grime sort of settling at the bottom of the panels. And we're probably going to put a little bit more in there later on, just to just to enhance that um, the bottom edge just a little bit more. So I really actually like this livery. Um, I think I've actually I've got one on order uh, for myself, which I really uh, which I just like the livery like this. And there's a, a class 37 as well from Hornby, uh, only a railway model, but um, I've got that on order because it's just a nice looking livery. I think it's just nice and bright, something a little bit different to what we've got on the layouts at the moment. So I'm going around the grills. I'm not going to go too heavy on the grills. We're going to Put a little bit of um, soot in there a bit later on, but um, if you look at those those grills, they're never going to be completely sort of black sooty. 
so um, we should put some of the grime in there to start with but we need some around the panel lines and we're doing the same sort of thing we're just going to push it down into the into the bottom and the, right into the corners there Just try and brush away as much as we can, um, just to get as much of that um, that sort of grime colour in the recesses and around the edges of the panels. This was a bit of a shock because I didn't realise the door opened um, until I put my brush through it. Um, so luckily, uh, I didn't go too hard and, and push the thing off totally. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for that, I really should have thought about that before, but anyway, it doesn't matter, it worked out fine. So that's pretty much that side done. Quite happy with that, so not, uh, not too heavy. Um, just needs to look sort of in service um, and I say the reference pictures show these as being you know fairly uh, fairly bright not too heavily weathered so same on the front um, maybe a little bit heavier within the, um, the the grill the front intake there's gonna be uh, that's gonna pick up a bit of a uh, mark so um, we'll give that another go another pass in a minute but similar again we'll just uh, very lightly dampen it and then we'll get the flat brush on there to create a few uh, runs extra at the bottom there just to make it look a bit dirtier and we're going to do pretty much the same on the roof as well so using the same color around the front going to be a little bit heavier um, it's going to pick up some exhaust fumes as well so we'll add a little bit of soot on that later on but for now we're just going to get this sort of into the uh, into the joins and around the panels just so you can it just lifts them out just makes them more obvious and just a couple of panels at a time don't forget because it will dry quickly you could use um, like a retarder if you if you thought uh, you can take much longer but this worked out fine, just a very damp um, soft brush just so we move it around if, if it does start to dry but apart from that I think we're okay just along this sort of lower edge of the roof or the top depends on the way you look at it they're normally um, so there, there's, there's some lines there that normally gets a bit sort of dirtier than the rest I just wanted to add a little bit extra in there just to um, just to make it a bit muckier just that one there and just try and use downward strokes as much as you can sometimes with uh, with some of these little details that are fit it's not always you know 
easy to do that um, but try to do downward strokes because that's the way that the rain would normally wash away any of the dirt and the and the grime that's on your loco a little bit too heavy there just uh, didn't have a cloth to hand immediately so anyway Now quite often on, on these you'll see one panel which will be completely different uh, differently weathered to the rest it will be uh, either very clean or very dirty or, or just look different really so there's no reason why we can't have one panel like this which is a little bit cleaner than the rest um, because it happens in in the real world just be careful on this particular one is the uh, the vent at the back of the uh, of the cab roof obviously opens um, it does come off as well if you uh, if you're not too careful so just just uh, beware um, but you want to paint that uh, well you want to weather the roof with the vent closed otherwise you'll end up with a clean patch at the back where the uh, where it is unless you're gonna leave it open forever then um, then fine it's not really an issue but uh, initially, yeah, just leave it closed as it is, and then, uh, then the weather room will be, uh, we'll get that around the, the runners. So, again, try to use strokes. Now, on the roof, obviously, we're not going to go, can't go run down, but they need to run from side to side because there is a curvature of the roof, so the, uh, the water will run. Um, off in a, a relatively straight line, um, just just down the side of the uh, of the loco. So just try to keep the brush strokes in in one particular direction as much as you can. So I'd say sometimes with so much detail on there, it is difficult to uh, to do that. just want to clean the windows back I'm not putting um, the arcs of the wipers in there necessarily um, because it in in my reality you know, it hasn't rained for a while on this shunter and uh, so there's no wiper arcs someone just cleaned it with a with an oily cloth and left that little mark so on the bottom I don't want to put too much on the um, on the on the um, the chassis, so we're going to use that dark earth again, and just paint a little bit in. And then a little bit of the, the uh, dark earth along the front um, and rear buffer beams, just at the lower edge, just to make it a little bit darker. Now the uh, vents, we need to add some soot. Now we could dry brush it in but um, we're going to use the airbrush. Now I've set this to really low power and I've taken the guard off the end you might just see and if we um, are very careful you can see it just touches a little tiny bit in. We really just want you know just a hint of the black. It's so easy unfortunately just to press the trigger a little bit too hard and, um, and get a bit of a a bit of a blob so just uh, just have a little practice like you see on the cloth there just to get your 
muscle memory in your finger working so that you know where the uh, where the point is where um, just the right amount of paint is going to come from your airbrush. Yeah, if you get a bit too much, it's really not the end of the world. You can knock it back with a damp brush or your thumb, whatever you've got handy. on the top as well around that exhaust um, vent it's just going to be normally a, um, a little mark as these get older they, they get completely covered uh, completely black and then they just seem to rust but uh, this is just um, again we don't want this too heavy rusted or uh, weathered so uh, a few powders this is the Humboldt Dark Earth again and we're just going to Use this on the uh, the underside of the of the chassis where the suspension is. We're not going to add any oils and greases. Um, do want it to look um, sort of any wetness on there. But I'm just brushing it back with a soft brush. Now we need to lacquer this right at the end, which is not um, something that I'm going to show in this video because you can't actually see anything happening. But uh, the, the the colours will change ever so slightly as you know the, the powders will um, sort of blend in a little bit further once the lacquer is on there. So I'm using a smaller uh, brush for uh, the powders than I normally do. I've normally got quite a, a, a large soft brush for this. But I just wanted to get um, be a bit more precise with this. And being very careful with everything, not to get anything on the um, on the, the the wheels because I don't want any sort of the pickups to be uh, um, interfered with by any any stray paint. Although once the varnish is on, uh, once that's fully dried. I will give the wheels a proper clean, um, just body with, uh, with with a thinners on a Q-tip, and uh, we'll run that for a little while and make sure they're totally clean. And then just the final bit, just on top of that, um, that sort of plate, on top of the chassis there, and that's it. We are done. So this was good fun this doing this one um, just a couple of paints that's all we've used, literally used two colors and uh, and that's it Mike I hope you're pleased with this one got a few more to uh, to show um, thank you for your business and I hope you enjoyed this video we'll speak to you very soon